some parts of the world, there are ethnic tribes whose traditions remain untouched by modernity. The Karo tribe of Ethiopia happens to belong to such category. The name Karo is derived from the word Kara, which means fish. And the Karo are the fish eaters of Omo Valley. According to Nomad Africa, the lower Omo Valley in southern Ethiopia is home to over a dozen different tribes who have lived there for centuries. The Karo tribe is an ethnic group that reside in the Omo Valley of Ethiopia, which according to their oral tradition, they believe their roots are hence men who emigrated to the mountains of the Hama and Bana people. They lived there for some time until one day their livestock disappeared in search of water. The livestock eventually returned, but when they disappear again, the Karo followed them. This is how they discovered the existence of the Omo River and came to settle on its banks. They have a population comprising of 1,000 to 3,000 individuals and have been erroneously called the Omotic speakers, are considered the smallest African tribe in the Omo Valley who maintains a close connection to the Omo River and the surrounding fertile <laughs> Agriculture is a fundamental aspect of their livelihood as this African tribe cultivate crops such as sorghum, maize and beans along the river banks. They also fish, breed goats and cattle. Only single young men are allowed to fish but they must complete a purification ritual immediately afterward. A similar adaptation occurs with hunting and it is presently controlled by official group which aim to preserve the fauna of the region. A part of the Karo's small accumulation of livestock, goats and sheep is looked after by the hammer. In return, the hammer receives that they all share a common genealogy. Arab people believe that the Desenage and Abo are of the same family. Therefore, any conflict between them is a taboo. The Karo and Bashada people manufacture earthenware pots that are used in commercial transactions with other groups, especially with the Desenage, who provide sorghum when their harvests have not been sufficient, while the Kara maintain friendly relationship with these groups. They have quite a different approach to their neighbors, the Nyangatom and Musi. This relationship has given rise to occasionally but bloody conflict. The year 1993 saw the most recent conflict, a disagreement over ownership of arable land on the eastern side of the Omo River. However, according to some Karo, the conflict with the Mosi occurred because of the certain desire Karo have for guns and prestigious scarification for successfully killing a person. The two most important Karo villages are Dos and Kocho. In the villages, people reside in conical huts known as Ono. These homes are renovated about twice a year due to destruction by termite. In front of this hut, there is a flat building where the family sleeps during the dry season. On visiting a village, you notice a kind of door in front of the hut and other places which is made of two posts in a Y shape. The posts are horizontal wood bars from which hang a series of objects such as buffalo tails, ear and hoofs. This is the molder a symbolic framework entrance to the house. There are family and clan molders. At the end of each village, there is a mama, a sacred place where only married people may go and where the most important rituals are carried out. The Karo people are renowned for their captivating body and artistic face painting, a process involving locally derived materials like white chalk, yellow mineral rock, iron ore, and charcoal. 
Both men and women engage in this symbolic and ornamental expression, using it only to enhance attractiveness, but also as a cultural practice during special occasions. The specific design drawn on their bodies can change daily and vary in content, ranging from simple stars or lines to animal motifs, such as guinea fowl plumage, or to the most popular, a myriad of handprint covering the toes and legs. Scarification is used especially among the Karu women to enhance beauty. It is said to believe that the more scars a woman has, the more older, wiser, and more attractive the woman becomes. The scars are made from small incision on the skin and ash is rubbed into the open wound. When they heal, they form small raised welts and ridges that are greatly admired by the men of this African tribe. Men of the Karo tribe also scar themselves as a symbol. A man who has killed an animal or a dangerous enemy may scar his chest. Every scar representing a kill. Men with chest scars are held in high esteem and respected by the Karo community. Aside the scars that are made to celebrate skills, the Karo warriors also distinguish themselves from a common man by wearing grey or red archer, head and bones made with ostrich feathers. It is being redone every three to six months and can be worn for up to a year. A man wearing a grey and red archer clay hair born with an ostrich feather indicates that he has bravely killed an enemy from another tribe or a dangerous animal, such as a lion or a leopard. Large beads around the neck also signifies big game kill. Sindals also protect them from mosquitoes and tetra flies. The Karo people also practice the bula ritual, also known as the bull jumping, like the other African tribes of the Omo Valley, the Hama and the Bashad. In order to be considered a man, a Karo boy must jump over a row of bull, as many as six to adulthood of a young male Karo. It is also to show his agility and strength which success qualifies him for marriage and to sit among the elders of the clan and the privilege of appearing in secret location why failure results in disgrace why the young men must leap over bulls the women of the Karo community are asked to be whipped until blood flows to show their commitment and ability to endure adversary the scars on the bodies of the Karo women are not just symbols of pride to them. It also serves as a form of insurance policy to the women, as the man who cursed them must take care of the woman. Should her husband die, Karo women eventually wear only a loin cloth made from heat and drape colorful beads around their necks. They wear leather on their hair with archer mixed with animal fat. Another fascinating tribal ritual is performed to maintain peace between the crocodiles and the indigents of the community. In the new moon, a person known as a crocodile whisperer goes into the darkness of the river banks, carrying a branch covered in leaves, which is being dipped into the river. Why, the, why he recites some ritual chant. The whisperer goes into the water where he washing himself, ensuring peace between the crocodile and the community for another month. The position of the whisperer is being passed down from father to son and is believed that the crocodile talks to him in his dream. The Karo people have some strict social taboos regarding marriage and childbirth. The fused dowry of a young Karo woman is 127 gold, which is generally made up in the year after the marriage, similar to the other group of the region. Sexual relations between young and single people are open, but produce serious social problems if any child results from these relationships. 
children who are born out of wedlock are believed to be the mingi or cost. These cost children are held responsible for droughts, famine, and other misfortune in the community. The same happens to any child who is born with a deformity or does not attain predetermined expectations such as the growth of the upper teeth between the lower ones. Accident which damage the penis at a young age or in the case of girls damage the breast are also considered bad luck and may result in abandonment of the child. This belief is especially prevalent throughout the Hama, Bana, Abo, and Tamako. Effort made by the government to eradicate abandonment have faced strong opposition. The group believe that the Mingi disgraced the family and group. The Karo believe that all members have to be physically perfect for the tribe to survive, and that normalize like twins, a cleft lip or a baby's teeth coming from the wrong way must be dealt with by leaving the child to die. At the end of the harvest and at times of initiations and marriages, the carol come together to enjoy dances. During the moonlight dances, the men leap joining one another in long line towards the woman who come forward one by one to select a man, the feble. Afterwards, the men and women coupling themselves, performing rhythmic and pulsating dances, thrusting their hips against one another. These dances often lead to marriage. They are mainly followers of ethnic religions, and each Karo village has at least one midwife who also knows some basic tradition medical knowledge the barrio is the creator and source of good fortune for the caro they also follow their religious leader the biti who is in charge of securing communal well-being in the social and natural environment named a unesco world heritage since 1980 the Karo people are one of the spell-binding African cultural destinations. Like many other indigenous groups in the region, experience challenges from external influences and modernization. Their rich cultural heritage, artistic traditions, and intimate relationship with the natural landscape continue to captivate these interested in the diversity of Utopia's Thank you.